Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Tonight's lecture will be a continuation and actually finishing off of the Shema Yisrael that we've been dealing with. This will be the sixth lecture on the topic. We finished off last week in the middle of the Shema, the last paragraph, uh, the one that dealt with the tzitzit. And we're up to uh, the words, V'hoya lachem l'tzitzit. And they shall be for you as fringes, Proof that you are a servant of the king, just as a slave wears a chain to show that he is the servant of a king based on the Urachayim. Now the word Vahoya is singular, <clears throat> and really it's not one string, it should be plural. And this is written to teach us that though we need both the blue and the white threads on the corners of our garments, the absence of either does not nullify the performance of the mitzvah, based on Aksav, the Akabbalah, as we know today that we, for the most part, wear the white only and not the blue. So again, either one would, be, would not nullify the mitzvah. It continues with the words, or item oto, and you shall look upon them. We translate the word oto as them, but that's really incorrect. The word for them is otum. So the word oto is singular and means him. So the verse is telling us that when one looks at his tzitzit, he should think about his connection to him, meaning God Almighty. And then it continues the word oto is also connected to the word ot, a sign, a garment that testifies that we are connected to the king of kings. As it says in the Gemara and the Talmud, evid melech melech, that the servant of a king is a king. In addition, the word tzitzit comes from the word Lahatzit, which means from the, uh, for, uh, to look. And from the word item, and you shall see them, we learn out the law that the mitzvah of tzitzit is only during the daytime when you can see them. Based on, these, on the, this word, many religious Jews, you've, as you've noticed, wear their fringes, their tzitzit, outside their pants, they're hanging out, so that they can be seen. Continues with the word of Zacharotem, et kol mitzvot Hashem, and that remember all the commandments of God. Now Rashi states the gematri of the word tzitzit is 600, plus the eight threads that are in each corner, and there are five knots. So 600 plus eight and five is 613, which alludes to the tariag mitzvot, the 613 commandments that we are all obligated to keep. Now the Aksavi Akabala says, that the blessing we make is lihis atef, to envelop, and not lihis kato, sot, to cover. This is in order to express the feeling of humility that is implied by the wearer when he puts on his talit. In addition, the word lihis atef has two meanings. One is covering our body and also draping ourselves in spiritual humility. And it says, vasitem otam, and do them, and the word re'item, and see, uzacharitem, and remember, and va'asitem, uh, and do, and are all connected to teach us that seeing brings one to remembering, and remembering brings one to doing, based on the Talmud in Menachot 43. Now the word otam has the same letters as the word emet, truth alluding to the fact that one should remember to always do that which is true and honest. Again, the whole world is based on this concept of truth, and that becomes very important. And one, you shall not go after your own heart and after your own eyes. Rashi states that the word taturu is connected to the word tur, which means to spy out. He states that the heart and the eyes are the spies of the body. They are the agents for it to sin. The eye sees, the heart desires, and then the body commits the sin based on a tanhuma. The Toldot Ephraim says, it should say that the heart desires and the eye sees, like the verse states. However, somehow, if the heart does not desire, the eye doesn't see. The al asks, why does the Torah state heart first and then the eyes? Usually a person first sees something and then desires it. And he answers 
that the first look that a person experiences is an accident. You walk down the street and you see a woman who's not dressed properly. You didn't intend to be there. You didn't know she would be there. So you see her. That's not a sin. But many times what happens is that activates a desire. It's when you look back that you're culpable for. Not for the first look, but for turning back. He also states that achare ayin, the after the eye can be an illusion that in the Hebrew alphabet, the letter in the, for the words ayin, so the letter after the letter ayin is a pei, after a yud is a chaf, and after a nun is a samach, which spells the word kesef, money. One should not lust after money, based on a, a Yehudi HaKodesh. A chassid once complained to the Kutzka, from Menachem Mendel of Kutsk, that he was having trouble remembering his studies. The Kutzka told him that one should not go after his heart and his eyes, and then if one doesn't, that will bring one, Laman Tizkuru, so that you will remember. Then his memory will increase, based on a Sipur Chassidim. Now, what does a portion of tzitzit have to do with the spies? The spies have been sent out <clears throat> by Moshe to explore the land, the land of Canaan, which is Israel today. However, by failing to discharge their mission properly, they came to openly defect from God and drag the whole nation along with them. And this connects to the conclusion of our portion, where the midst of tzitzit comes to warn us every day not to go exploring, after your hearts and after your eyes, which leads you astray. So it was because the spies strayed after their own hearts and eyes that they forgot about God, who guides our destiny and directs our actions based on Shimshul before Hirsch. Below Toturu, and that one, sh that one should not be led by his, pardon me, that one should be led by his intellect and not by his emotions. It's interesting, the trup, the musical notes that are over, that we lane the Torah with, over the word saturu, is called an azla gerish, which translates literally to mean go and drive away. This teaches us an important lesson. When one has evil thoughts, they should not give in to them. Instead, when evil thoughts Azla, come to a person, then Gerish. You should drive them away and banish them from their mind, based on Rav Shimshul or Fal Hirsch. Then it continues, Asher Atem, Zonim Acharehem, after which you go astray. The word for a harlot in Hebrew, a prostitute, is Zona. So this is a warning against sexual improprieties. Asher Atem, Zonim Acharehem that originate in your heart and in your eyes. Then it continues with the words, Laman tizkeru vasitem et kol mitzvotai, that you shall remember and do all of my commandments. The Talmud Menachot 44a states that tzitzit will protect you from sinning. There's a story told in the Talmud on 44a about a chassid, about a young man who had heard about a prostitute who was infamous. She was visited by counts and dukes, noblemen of all ranks, even kings. And she was very f famous for what she was able to do. And to, to have a knight with her cost like 400 gold coins, it was a fortune. And not only that, you had to make a reservation months, if not years, ahead of time. And the money had to be sent in advance. But he got it into his head, the Gemara says, that this is what he wanted to do. And so he sent his money, and he was given a date to be with her. And on that day, he came to her mansion. He was let in by his, her butler, taken up into a magnificent bedroom. And in her bedroom, she had seven beds, one on top of the other, with a silver ladder leading from one bed to the other. And it was said that as you would move from one bed to the other, that the ecstasy would just get greater and greater. Besides being a very beautiful woman, 
She was also very talented. And this was her profession. And again, as I said, even kings would come to her. So she greeted this chassid, and they started to go on to the beds. And she disrobed, and as he was taking off his clothing, his seat seat hit him in the face. And he stopped, and he went down from the beds and sat on the floor. And she joined him on the floor, very confused. And she said to him, don't you find me attractive? And he said, just the opposite. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. So she said, what is, why did you stop? Why aren't you undressed? And he began to explain to her that uh, who he was. And she said, you know, I'm not refunding money. You know, you paid this. This, this is what it is. And he said, that's okay, I don't want the money back, I just can't do this. And she said, what do you mean you can't do this? So she made him spend the night telling him all about Judaism, about where he was from, who his teacher was. And they spent the night talking. He left the next morning. And she, the following day, took one third of her fortune and gave it to the king, one third to charity, and one third she kept for herself. And she went to the town where this young man was from and talked to his Rebbe and told his Rebbe that she wanted to convert to Judaism, not just for the Chassid, but he had touched something in her that really moved her greatly. And the end result was she became a Orthodox Jew and married this Chassid. And that's what the Gemara talks about. So we see that the tzitzit can protect a person from sinning, and that's the idea. Shulchan Aruch cautions that while reciting the Shema, one should be careful to enunciate the Zion of the word Tizkaru, you may remember. So it doesn't sound like the word Tizkaru, you may hire, or Tishkaru, you may falsify. Similarly, we should enunciate carefully the Zion in the word Uzacharatem, and you shall remember. Now the al has. Why is the term remember mentioned twice in this portion? He says so that even if one cannot observe all the mitzvot, just by remembering them, that God will attribute the thought as if it were a deed. As the saying goes, mach shabbat kamaaseh. Excuse me, that a thought is like a deed. And then, the yisem kedoshim lelokechem, and you'll be holy to your God. Now the Yetzahar, the evil inclination, will try to make you forget your good intentions. The only way to be successful in this world is to turn your thoughts into actions. Thoughts alone are not enough. Follow through and turn them into actions. The key becomes don't ever give up. It's not over until it's over. And that becomes the key, again, as I mentioned earlier to someone, that in the end we know it'll be good. If it's not good, it's not the end. Stay the course. Ani Hashem Elokeichem, I am the Lord your God. Asher Otseiti Etchem, who has brought you out, Me'eretz Mitzrayim, from the land of Egypt. Liyot Lachem Lelokim, to be to you for a God. Rashi states that the two names of God allude to him being faithful, to reward, and to punish. But serving him is not an option, since he is a king. As the word lochem, for you, the letters can be arranged to form the word melech, king. Those acts that one performs lochem for yourself should be done lelo kim, for the sake of God Almighty, based on the holy Baal Shem Tov. Now, why is it that when we say the Shema, we end with the word emet, truth? However, when the Torah writes the paragraph, it doesn't end with the word emet. So the Chassam Sofer answers that when we say the Shema, we are wearing our talit, we are crowned with our tefillin, and we have accepted upon ourselves the yoke of heaven with love, and then we say, Anochi Hashem Elokeichem, I am the Lord your God, and then it is definitely emet, true. It's a reality, not just a theory. However, when we read these words in the Torah, it is at best a good suggestion. The Shema ends with the words, Ani Hashem Elokeichem, I am the Lord your God. You know, there's a story told of the Alter Rebbe when he was just a young child. 
he was asked a question, which was, where is there a verse in the Torah that begins and ends with the same words? And he answered, the place where Moshe did not speak the truth. Because when Moshe wrote the Torah, he did not add the word emet, truth, to the end of the verse. However, when we recite to prayer, we end with the word emet, truth, based on Mangin Zehatik. Again, may God bless us that we should experience the ultimate truth with the coming of Mashiach Sekenu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and be well. Always remember the truth.